Hey guys, Dr. Mike Israel here for Juggernaut Training Systems and Renaissance Periodization. I'm going to talk to you real quick about a couple of pervasive myths in training. This is the kind of training that we're talking about. Training to try to get bigger, more muscular, and training to try to get stronger. So we'll cover a little bit of a breadth of this topic, but just a few quick tips on major myths that myself and some other sees is very pervasive and kind of time for them to get going. So one of them is this kind of myth of partial ranges of motion. Now, partial range of motion training has some sport-specific application, especially with regards to specificity. Sometimes, because we'll be competing in a partial range, or because it affords us some kind of special advantage, it's good to use. But that's the very small minority of cases. Most of the time, partial range of motion training regularly trying to get bigger and stronger by not going through a full range of motion on basic exercises suffers from a couple of problems. And on the other hand, actually doing a full range of motion gives us a significant amount of benefits. We'll talk about some of these benefits and drawback over six main points. First point, if you want to grow the most possible muscle in a particular muscle group, let's say the biceps, there are various parts of the biceps that are innervated by various parts of your nervous system, and they're called motor units. The actual nerve and the muscle fibers it innervates. Not all motor units are on from this part of the movement to this one. Some of them are on, some are not. Not all of them are on in this part, and not all of them are on on the tail end of the entire range of motion. But if you use the biceps through its full range of motion, and that applies to all muscles, all of the motor units are properly activated, they're properly stressed, and a maximum growth stimulus results. So if you use full range of motion training, all of your motor units in the muscle get hit, all of them potentially grow, and you're not kind of screwing yourself over by not targeting parts of the muscle, you get full muscular development if you do a full range of motion. And if you don't, you might be missing out. Number two, if you have any sport specific application of your training, one of the easiest things for me to think of my experience in the sport is for a competitive grappling, jiu-jitsu, MMA, boxing, or something like that. In some kind of combat situation, and in almost every other sport, you want strength through your full range of motion, your body's full ability to move, because you're gonna get put into situations, let's say in jiu-jitsu or MMA, where you're upside down, there's a guy beating down on top of you or trying to choke you, where your legs are gonna be bent all the way into you, your elbows might be over here. If you don't practice training full range of motion squats, full range of motion, tricep extension, something to that extent, if you don't take your body through full range of motion, you're not gonna be able to develop strength through a full range of motion. And if someone puts you in a position where you're not used to exhibiting your strength, you can be very strong in other ranges of motion, but you're definitely screwed in that situation. So if you wanna be strong all around, just plain strong no matter what, training through a full range of motion is a very, very good idea. Point number three, how much volume of work, force times distance, you do is a huge determinant of how big you get. If you sum metabolites, if you get the burn, it's another big determinant of growth. But an independent determinant of growth outside of those is the actual stretching of a muscle under load, stretch under tension. That gives us an independent hypertrophic or muscle growth stimulus. So, if we want the most out of our training for growth, we should be doing full range of motion because it's that maximal stretch under tension. If you're benching and you stop your benches right here, you don't do a full lockout, maybe you don't stretch all the way down, you're getting possibly good volume load if just from doing enough reps. If you get the burn, you get a lot of metabolites build up, you've checked those two boxes, but that third box of painful, deep stretching under load, that's not gonna get checked off unless you go through a full range of motion. If you want all of your hypertrophy boxes checked, you want the most growth, Stretch under tension is a very good idea. Point number four is a little bit more technical. If you want growth, the biggest factor for growth is the volume of training. And the volume of training is another way of saying that is the total mechanical work, the force times distance. So if you want more volume of training, an easy way to go about it without having to jack up the number of reps you're doing total, which takes the stress on the body, and by using even less weight than maybe you normally do in a partial, you can go through a full range of motion that generates a huge distance for the bar to travel every time, that sums up your volume to get you up to enough volume, your maximal recoverable volume perhaps, a bunch of volume to actually get you to grow. So instead of having to do like squat 315 for a bunch of uh, half reps and do a bunch of sets of 15 and get a certain total volume, you might be able to do just 275, but sets of 10 all the way up and down, just a couple sets later, you've summed up enough volume that you'd have to be there in the gym forever doing partials. It's just an easier way to get volume if you expand the distance and go through a full range of motion in addition to those other benefits. Here's another one. If you train with a partial range of motion to get the same forces and to get the same stresses, you have to use more weight. So what ends up happening is you make the exercise inherently less safe 
just because you're not willing to go through a full range of motion. How many times have you guys walked into a gym and seen a guy in the leg press use like every single plate? You're trying to bench, he's like, bro, can I have that plate? I gotta use, you know, 2,500 pounds of leg press. You look at what they're doing, and they're doing these BS little half reps for no reason, okay? That stuff is dangerous. One little slip up of a half rep, you get stapled in that leg press fast. You guys see a guy who can really squat 225 for reps, walking out 405, buckling around. That's really not safe at all, and it radically increases your risk of injury, and for what? If your real mission is size and strength, going through a full range of motion allows you to lose less weight to be safer, and you get the same amount of muscle growth, especially for bodybuilding, especially for the years, decades it takes to build enough muscle to get super strong and to get super big, why would you wanna take needless rest and be like, yeah, I could've had big legs, but I was doing partial squats that one time, my knee slipped, and that was it. If you use weight you can actually handle through a full range of motion, you reduce your risk of training injury, and everything works out for the better. Lastly, how do you know if you're making progress? Let's say that you benched two months ago, 300 for three, oh, down to about the middle, kinda like you usually do, not touching your chest. Two months later, just recently, you benched 300 pounds, but for six reps. But you're not quite sure if maybe you cut those reps a little higher, if you didn't go all the way to lockout. You're not sure, so you think, oh, I got stronger, and my program's working, but, but maybe you're lying to yourself, and there's that little demon in the back of your head that's always gonna be like, and uh, maybe I didn't get stronger. Maybe I just BS the reps more and just cut the reps this time, and maybe I felt a little better today. That gives me one extra rep, and that's only two to make up. Am I progressing? Take the guesswork out. Full range of motion, pause bench every single time to a full lockout. If you used to get threes with 300 and now you've got six, there's no chance. Yeah, you could have felt better for one extra rep. That leaves two reps, you got stronger. So if you want help tracking your progress, which is important, and to know that you're on track, do a full range of motion every time, leave the guesswork out, and then when you get progress, you can be confident that you're actually making it. That about sums it up. For most people, under most circumstances, if your mission is to get big and strong, do yourself a favor, full range of motion lifting. Take the ego, put it into doing strict form, strict technique with big weights through a full range of motion. Let your ego speak there, not in cutting weights to try to impress people by leg pressing a zillion pounds or something like that. Dr. Rizertel for Renaissance Periodization Juggernaut Training Systems, thanks for tuning in.